What's up guys? So this week, uh, week 36 to 37, um, has been another week of pretty much me staying at home. Um, I had one appointment to the chiropractor and I think that's it. That's the only place I've gone all week. Um, of course, finding ourselves telling this story, which we started as just kind of a normal pregnancy story, has turned into what being pregnant is like during the coronavirus pandemic. And um, we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four weeks left and everything that's going on, so enjoy. morning it's uh saturday march 28th and today i am 36 weeks <laughs> pregnant um i can't believe i'm 36 weeks pregnant i feel like yesterday i was 20 weeks pregnant the last few months have been insane uh and um, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so here's this 36 week belly in all its glory. So nice. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I am heavier this week by a couple pounds. I hadn't gained weight for the last two weeks um, really, but I do feel more like water retention and stuff, so. Um, and I've been trying to eat a little bit more, so we'll see. 167.7, which I think is like three and a half pounds or something like that heavier than I was last week. Um, which like I said, I'm not super surprised about that because I went, oh, he's moving. I went two weeks um, without gaining anything and then I can just feel all the thickness coming in all right i'm just headed home from my walk now um and normally our date night's on thursday night but we didn't do it this week well first of all we can't really go anywhere but um julian's mom offered to let uh Knox sleep at her house tonight um so we're doing date night tonight he picked up pizza um we're gonna watch a movie but one of the other things that we're gonna do and i think is important to talk about on the pregnancy vlog is our doula had sent over some like questions some potential um scenarios that might happen like during the birth um timing of the birth after the birth that she thinks it's good for us to talk about before um they happen so while we're eating dinner tonight i'll probably go through some of those and we, we'll talk about some of those and um yeah just get on the same page so that we don't have to talk about them when we're both in a high stress anxiety situation, um, like in labor or not having slept for a few days after the baby's born or whatever. So, um, yeah, there'll be a lot of that in the next few weeks. Um, one of the things that we've talked about is just even with this like coronavirus, neither one of us are super worried about us getting super sick or Knox getting super sick. We're very healthy people. Um, but with the way that the hospitals are, and everything is being treated, um, we have to protect from being taken away from me. So even if I had no symptoms at all, if I tested positive for coronavirus or had like a fever and so they tested me, um, it seems like what they're doing is taking the baby away. So the conversation started last night with like, hey, we got to be extra careful, um, even more so than we have been, just to protect Banner from being taken away from us 
when he's first born. So anyway, date night, not super romantic topics, but important topics. And I think things that people definitely need to um, address before they have their baby. So um, pretty much everyone everywhere, literally in the world is stressed out right now. <laughs> um about either getting sick or losing their job or their loved ones getting sick or just there's everything there's a long long list of things that everyone is on edge about um all sitting in their homes just kind of like stewing about it uh, my personal thing that i'm most concerned about is obviously this pregnancy where I can't pause the pregnancy or put it on hold or wait till everything blows over to like, you know, to like uh, let the baby out. Um, so it's rolling and it's the train's coming and I can't stop it. Um, and this week I try to stay away from the news and I've said that like on multiple episodes for the last few weeks, but uh, I do still check some stuff obviously. Um, it's like watching reality TV, the news these days. It's like so much drama. Anyway, I um, I like I read about our area sometimes, and I opened up an article that said that um, the peak of when this thing is going to be the worst, as far as like how many people are actually dying all at once, which just it sounds like cold-hearted to even like say it like that, but that's what they were talking about. Um, will be the week of April nineteenth which is my the week of my due date. Um, and when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, like if I had to go to the hospital, whether I was having complications with the birth or baby B was having complications, or if I am forced to go to the hospital because I somehow um, catch the coronavirus, or even if I don't have coronavirus, if I'm just showing symptoms of something similar, they're probably gonna send me there. I will be giving birth to him in the peak, worst possible time at the hospitals where people are just dying left and right and the staff is stressed out and overworked and terrified to be there. And this is, if I end up at the hospital, that's when it's gonna be. Like, I can't change the date of this thing. Like, it's not a wedding. I can't like postpone it or anything like that. Like, that is when I would be there. So, um, and then of course, I allowed myself once I saw that to like read more articles. And right now it's just a complete disaster in New York. Um, and I read that uh, in their hospitals, at least for a few days, I think they've changed it since then, but at least for a few days, they were not allowing spouses to come in even with their laboring wives. So you were having these women in labor in the hospital, whether they you know, were planning on having a hospital birth or had to go there, completely in labor alone, like alone. And I read like that they were understaffed and the nurses were clearly like exhausted and everybody's in masks and hazmat suits and like um, they come to check on you. I've never had a hospital birth, so I don't know exactly how it works, but I know they kind of like leave you alone and then come to check on you and leave you alone and come to check on you. So I just pictured myself having to go to the hospital for whatever reason and being in labor alone and not even a lot having Julian be able to come in there and it just like, um, for like a full day, it really tormented me. And like, to the point where I was like very on edge, I like was like yelling at our dogs. I was like mean to our dog because I couldn't get him on his leash. And very short with Julian and just, um, yeah, like it was, an, it's, still, it's still a concern obviously, and I'm still stressed out about it, but there was a day this week that it was really, really, bad that I was worried about that. Um, so I had to just like just calm myself down, um, went for a long walk, which I know I talked about a little bit last week was these walks that I've been taking. It's like a two mile walk, um, that I've been taking every day, listening to my birth playlist and just breathing. Um, letting a few people know that I was like not in a good place that um, I know have the ability to help me out of it. Molly and uh, Erica, who is 
I don't even know if we're calling her my doula still because there's just like a 95% chance she's not going to be able to come here, but I'm still talking to her all the time. Um, and just trying to like get that stuff out of my mind and focus on the plan that we do have, which is obviously to have him here. So one, two, three, four, caballos, mono. Come on, caballos. Come in, caballos. Come in. So what are you guys doing in there? What are you guys doing in there, caballos? No touch, okay? No touch fence. Out you go. Hey, it's Wednesday, uh, April 1st, um, April Fool's Day, I guess. Uh, just getting home from my like little two mile walk that I do every night. Um, today's been good. Uh, we got a lot of the house put together with furniture, um, so that feels really nice and I love all of it and I'm happy with it. So that's good. It's definitely feeling more like home. Just, I mean, nesting at its finest. All moms go through the nesting phase. I definitely went through like the most hardcore nesting phase of all time. And now it's like even more so because we have to be here all day um, for the foreseeable future. Uh, they announced last night that it's through May 4th, at least where we live, um, that they're asking people to stay home. So making sure that this place is not adding to any of the anxiety that I'm having, but it's just a place of comfort. And I think that's the whole point of having a home birth is to feel comfortable and feel safe and secure. So, I mean, I've been spending a lot of time like putting things back to where they go and putting new stuff together and cleaning and just everything. Um, and that's been really therapeutic um, on a, completely next level version of ne what nesting is for every pregnancy. So that's been really good. I've been spending, you know, I've talked about a few times, like the baths that I've been taking like an hour long, just chilling in the bathtub because that's where, you know, baby B will be born and listening to the playlist. And um, yeah, just picturing it. I'm finally gonna be able to put his nursery together because uh, it's been a storage room for this remodel for the whole time. And it's just been, had boxes and furniture from other rooms in there and stuff. But we're going to be able to put that together this next week. And um, yeah, just getting in my like little mama bear cave and ready to have my family here. And in a way, the stay home thing is kind of nice because it forces us to stay home. I don't think I would necessarily be going out that much more than I am now um, with the place that I'm in, but Julian, on the other hand, he has a really hard time normally staying put or sitting still. And it's brought like a stillness to him completely where he's, you know, we're not in the same room together all day, but we're both just here and there's no workers here anymore. So it's quiet. And I think both of us, it's just helping us really wind down into where we need to be mentally for the birth. Actually, this morning at like 5.30 was awake and I was like, he's moving so much. Do you want me to start for you? Sure, yeah. So I had a, an appointment with uh, the midwife, um, Naomi, who will be doing the birth. Um, she brought another midwife with her, which was actually one of the other women that I um, interviewed. So there were two that I did Skype calls or FaceTime or Zoom or whatever calls with. Um, and she was one of them. I guess they work together because I mean, if you're a midwife and you can't control when your person's gonna go into labor and even though you try to space them out a little bit, they could, you could have two people in labor at the same time. So they back each other up a little bit. And so she brought her so that, um, I can meet her just in case she comes, or I guess if 
neither one of them are at a birth when I go into labor, they'll both come. So that was pretty cool. They came and did an appointment and, um, <clears throat> You know, we talked a lot about like what their restrictions are and what their protocols are because they've even changed for them. They're not nearly as restricted as hospitals, but you know, they've got some rules and regulations. Um, they took our temperature like right when they got here. Um, Cause I mean, I don't know what they would do if it was higher. Like if they would just like leave or like ask Julian to leave. I don't know. They didn't really, we haven't really asked them that, but they took both of our temperatures when they got here. Uh, I think Julian was like 97.9 and I was like 98.2. So we were safe and we were, it was good. Had her like a really good talk. Um, basically they ha they also can't deliver baby B unless I'm past 37 weeks, which at the time of this filming, I, I just gotta make it to tomorrow. So <laughs> I think we're gonna be safe um, for them to come, but talked about like everything that I'm gonna need. I ordered like this big box of like I mean, birth supplies to have at home for the home birth. I'll have to open that on next week's episode for you guys and show you what's in there because most people will probably have never seen it. Um, and then they gave me like this herbal tincture that I'm supposed to take every day that's supposed to like prime my uterus. It's like just some herbs. One of the herbs is like false unicorn um, root or something like that. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Um, and it's definitely different than the hospital or even than the birthing center. It's, um, you know, they, they have their way that they like to do things and natural and everything. I asked them even like, when will you guys start checking? Like if I've dilated or anything and they're like, we don't like, we're not going to tell you at 38 weeks if you've started to dilate or anything. And even at the birth center where I gave birth to Knox, they did that last time. Um, they felt him and said that his head was still down. So that's good. They're going to give me one more ultrasound, even though they said that, um, I don't need it. They, they can feel what position he's in. It's just for me to like, cause I was so worried about that. Um, blood pressure was good, everything. And, uh, yeah, that everything was good to go. They're, ex they, they said they're excited and they, I don't think they have another birth before mine scheduled well lynette might but i don't think naomi does um so yeah sometime in the next like two to four weeks he's gonna come and it's gonna be what it is one thing that actually did happen which i thought i found it to be funny because when i was pregnant with nogs something that they do um and i don't know how worried about this they get at the hospitals um, or with like a regular OB, but for sure for the birth center and the midwives, they do this measurement that's like from the top of your uterus to your pubic bone and they measure it every week and they want to see like a very specific growth and like your belly's supposed to be a very specific size each week. And if it's too big or too small, they worry about the size of the baby. Right at this exact same time, around like 36 weeks when I was pregnant with Knox, they started telling me your, your belly's not growing anymore. Like we're worried that your baby's tiny. And so with Knox for the past or for the last like three weeks of my birth, I had to get these tests twice a week to make sure that he was moving and that he was healthy. And they kept saying how small he was going to be, how small he was going to be. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I felt good. They had me not working out for two weeks at the very end because they were like, you need to eat more and stop moving. And it was like everything against everything that is normal to me and felt right for me. I would just listen to them. Right. So long story short, Knox was not small. He was seven pounds. He's not, he wasn't a huge baby, but it's, he was fine, completely fine. And my belly just didn't really progress past like a 36 week size belly with him in there. So I care how I carried him. So they measured my belly this week and they were like, your belly's the same size as it was last week. And I was like, here we go. And I just laughed and I was like, just so you know, this happened last time. And they were like, okay. Uh, and I was like, my baby was seven pounds, six pounds, 14 ounces technically. But they, last time they really freaked me out and said that he was going to be small and they like were doing all these tests and then it came out and he was fine. So I'm just telling you like this exact same thing happened last time. They didn't seem super concerned about it, especially because he moves so much still. Um, but I always, I find that measurement thing interesting. I don't know how that's accurate because everybody's bodies are different sizes. It's weird. 
But um, that was the only kind of thing that came up that they were like a little bit weird about. We'll see. They were like, made me weigh myself afterwards and stuff. And the, this is what I get for putting everything on Instagram. They follow me on Instagram and they were like, well, what about the workouts or whatever? And I'm like, it's hard for me to explain. Like, you have no idea how like not aggressive those workouts are for me for any, for them, they still look hard or whatever. Um, but yeah, Julian's like, don't you worry. I'll make sure she eats. I'll put more fat in her meals and her, we'll give her an extra shake or something like that. But I'm not worried because this is the exact same thing that happened with Knox. This has been pretty normal for the last few days. I'm definitely getting the like water retention swelling. I'm not even gonna show you my toenails because they need to be painted. But uh, this explains why I'm like four pounds heavier this week. I've been trying to drink a lot of water and move and everything, but it's just at that point, not much we can do. Um, and then I'm just excited. Uh, to meet him, honestly. Like I have this picture in my head of who he's gonna be. In my mind, he is who, like Knox is me and baby B is gonna be Julian. I could be completely wrong and he could come out just, if he came out looking exactly like Knox, I think I would lose my mind. Like, I don't know that I can handle two of that. It's just like, he's so special and funny and like, cute and everything like I don't even know how I would deal with that like I almost want him to be different so that I can like have a different relationship with him um but I'm really excited about it I feel like I've really been able to like bond with him um <clears throat> one of the things I put on my Instagram story today actually is uh when I was pregnant with Knox I had a song that like I mean at the time it like soothed me for some reason more than him but it was uh a Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, one of, the, one of the like classic Disney songs. And I would sing that to him while he was in my belly like every day. And still to this day, I've sang that song to him every day of his life. Um, and I guess I just kind of figured that I would sing the same song to Baby B. But then when I was walking just last night, um, the song, you are my sunshine, my only, it like a cooler version than what I just gave you, came on and I just, started like ugly crying like as people were passing me like trying not to look awkward and I was like this is him like this is my song and he's he has his own song and I got this is what I need to sing to him and it was weird like I don't know why I latched onto that but just little things where I feel like I have like my own little thing with him now and it's not just another version of Knox I'm so excited to meet him um Physically, I feel pretty good. I'm still exercising. Um, I think I only worked out four days this week where normally I go five. I mean, but that's still great. Still taking the walk, still sleeping pretty good. And so, yeah, we'll see if it's two more weeks or four more weeks, but um, I can feel feel the transition happening of, being, of feeling ready with our home being ready and everything. So I'm um, just gotta stay healthy and stay home and, and try not to get sucked into the madness of what's going on around us.